about to go somewhere out now Time's to rise and elevation starts to drop down A little secret, don't kiss and tell, you're so bad I'll probably see you in hell Welcome to hell, baby This is podcast hell It's such a frustrating hike, because 5'8 isn't, like, short No, I've had people call me, like they're like short king. I'm like I'm not a fucking no, short. No, that's bullshit. Short kings are like five two, five three, you know, tiny dicks. That's different. <laughs> that's a different thing. This, um, I, I'm I'm yeah, average I would, not, I would never describe you as short. No, no, no. but I've been described as short. By like I've, like women. Women have described you. As women short? have described me as short, or I've heard them like talking to me. They're like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I don't really like shorter guys, and I'm like, I'm a shorter guy. I also dated women taller than me, and it never bothered me, but I feel like other people commented on it. Oh, really? Or had opinions on it. Man. I don't know. Just let, let people live. Yeah, sure. I mean, also, it's like, if, if I don't mind, you know, climbing the scales to get up during sex, I'm allowed yeah, to yeah. do that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like rock climbing. You got to, like, get your balance, come up. <laughs> if you're shorter, it's fun. I could date a chick in the WNBA. Oh, I, think yeah. the high, I think the highest I could go is probably like, like six foot. I could date. That's a, the tallest you could go. I'm five eight and a half. I think if I went to six foot, uh, that's four inches tall. I think if that's, Liz was six foot five, you couldn't date. It's fucking over. What, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's done. Um, I don't. I feel you wouldn't feel a little weird dating somebody of almost a foot taller than you. I, uh, you know, it's I am. I have yet to really have that situation, I guess. I, uh, yeah. Like, I, in my life, I am yet to. I have never had that situation. So okay. I, like, <laughs> correct that. Um, and uh, I don't think I'd, I... I can't imagine it bothering me, but I, you don't know until you're in it. Yeah, it never, it never bothered me until, like... I remember I was breaking up with a girl who was taller than me, and she mentioned it. In a she not- said it? In yeah, like in a, a, in, a you're, uh, in a not nice no, way. That's not cool. And not in like a not in like a straight ins, insult way, but like in a backhanded compliment kind of way. Like you're tough for a short guy or something. Yeah, yeah. or something like like I said something like we were, we were in the middle of a fight, and I was like, why can't we ever just like say nice things about each other? And she was like, look, you have a lot of confidence for a guy that's two inches shorter than me. And like, oh, that's wow. how she said it. And I went like, holy fuck, okay. is that how you feel? Because yeah, it's like, we've been, cool. at that point, we've been together for a while. It didn't last much further than that. Um, but yeah, I, I just like, I never. That's a lack of communication. That shows, she, that's part of the sure. reason the relationship didn't work. If she had been honest early on. Well, the, the main reason the relationship well, yeah, didn't I mean, work uh, is it was very hard for her not to bang my friends. That's that rough. was also tough. Yeah, that was a, a tough, tough one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, can, I can feel it's got to be hard when you really want to bang. I would say that's the bigger, <laughs> like, definer of whether a relationship works. Do you remember being a part of this breakup? I do, I, yes. <laughs> do you remember what you did? Yeah, I, I remember I said something to you. You said something to me that was very, like, illuminating at the time, because we mm. were working together in New York, and... I was, yeah, I was where I was, I used to wear my relationship problems on my face and my being, I probably yeah. still do. But no, like, you still, you're very yeah. vocal. You're very open about uh, your my troubles. Yeah. In, yeah. A, in a good way, I think. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. You seek help. I seek help. You see, you seek a, 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 a kind ear. Yes. I'm also an external processor yeah. as I've learned. So I do yeah. like to talk things through. So I was sharing to you my relationship issues and I, I was like yeah so like you know I, I think I like probably need to go to therapy like I'm a little repressed from growing up Catholic and you know she has slept with three of my friends during breaks We've been, and you just went stop 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 <laughs> I mean that and I went what and he was like you go Eric if I was a judge <laughs> and somebody came into court to make the argument you just made for your girlfriend I would go Case closed. <laughs> and you just, it was like the way you said it was like there was care, but also like a little bit of anger that I had brought this to you as a legitimate thing. I mean, that's I mean, even hearing it now. That's wild. It was wild. It's a wild thing. I, I'm not yeah. going to say uh, I've, I've had recently I've had people talk to me about relationship stuff that uh, 
it's it's very interesting when people are in it the way they'll they still want to like protect the other person Mm -hmm. because there's some care there but it's like they start saying the facts to you and you're just like yeah and you know you can't go hard at the other person because you're like you know i can't maybe they you know haven't worked through their feelings (coughs) excuse me but i've been in that situation where i've had to uh, a few times now because i'm in my 40s i've had a few times where friends are divorcing and well just in a bad relationship yeah. and maybe unable to look at it objectively like you can't you can never look at it objectively no, when you're, you're in, in the it. storm you're no. in the storm and you're no, like well it's, it's not it's, as bad as it was when the hull breached yeah. but you're like yeah, it's still a fucking storm and and also yeah. like you just everybody it's it's a spectrum but everybody has that um ability to turn a blind eye when some of their needs are getting met So it's like, oh, this part of myself is getting its needs met. The fear of not having those needs met is always, so. you know, it's that big, the biggest fear is the fear of change and the fear, you know, so it's like people want you to, like when you said that to me, I imagine somewhere in your brain, you were kind of hopeful that I was going to like, be like, um, you, uh, that sounds like something you guys could work through, you know, or so, like something yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but like, obviously, I mean, even hearing it now, that's such an insane thing to <laughs> I even. Remember, I remember the the relief. Like, my family did not like this girl. Of course, they were not happy. You gotta was, trust the family. Well, well, yes, yeah, but, but let me yeah. let me tell my. You're right. They, yeah. they, yes, and I do now. Yeah. But back then, I I was like, I'm I'm fucking I live by my own code, <laughs> just whatever horseshit. And I remember, like, every time my mom would ask me about my relationship, I would just be like, it's fine. And, like, I would just, like, try to, like, power through and find positive things to say. And not long after our conversation, she called me and she went, how are things going with blank? And I just went, fucking terrible. And, like, I just saying that... (laughs) was like, oh my God, the honesty. Like, I almost get emotional thinking about it now of like, just being able to go like, this is a nightmare. I need to find a way out. I, I It's weird to say that and we're still together, but I need to be out. I need to find the way out. Your mom was so happy. She wasn't happy then. She was, uh, you know, she was sad for me. Yeah, but yeah. like, nobody was, nobody was upset that that relationship ended in my life. It was, and then there was like, the rubble afterwards of like, oh, I've been like getting in fights in public with this person and people are now associating me. Like now this person's going around and talking shit about me. Like I have to like deal with that. And like just, just that kind of nonsense where you're like in your twenties, you t- like getting your needs met. Like you're only, the only need that was getting met is I was getting laid. Everything else fucking was horrible. Yeah. In your twenties. Yeah. Well, here's the part that people don't talk about in their twenties is the loneliness. Like oh, sure, the, being yeah. lonely in your 20s is a different type of loneliness. Like you have not learned how to be alone, I think, when you're that young. Yeah, yeah. And it's like really terrifying, especially when you're like out on your own. So I feel like that's why so many of those relationships, people are like, oh, it's your first relationship. I'm like, it's also your, like, your brokest, your, you're just, every aspect of your life yeah. is so... In, in flux at that point that it never surprises me that that's when people get in those relationships. It's surprising me when people get in those relationships when they're older. All right. Buddy. All right, let him out. Sorry. There's no... Com- what was going to happen. I know. All right, Gordon. So this is the... You guys know what's happening now. Gordon's leaving in 20 minutes. He'll paw at the door. Rob will have to let him back in, and then that, that'll be the end no, of the show. You no, know you need. What do I need? You need, like, some sort of, like, one of those doggy doors. If you're going to, like, do redo the... Oh, in the in the door? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That, like, uh, you can put soundproofing over it. Well, what, the soundproofing is important because it's very important to Liz that she doesn't hear this bullshit I while know. she's downstairs. Yeah, very Which I the, get. Nothing is more important to her than this podcast not existing in her mind. <laughs> that really does matter... It's, it's really a, hard to explain to people the the podcasting mindset because it really is a marathon. Sure. It uh, is like when the reality hits the significant other that you're like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this a lot. And you're like, yeah. okay. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. Well, it's just kind of like, I think it's, I mean, you were talking about like being alone in your 20s and not being able to handle it. Now, when I get alone time, like, I don't like being alone. Like, if, like a couple of times I went on the road for like a week doing shows and by like night five or six, I'm like, okay, I'm sad. This sucks. I, I want to be home. I miss my wife, miss my dog. But for the first four nights, that alone time is amazing. Like you appreciate it because in your 20s, you haven't really like lived with a person. You like le- you eat like shit. What do you mean? I said you eat like shit. Oh my God. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a great Nick DiPaolo joke about when he, af- 10 minutes after arriving into a hotel room, he's like, there's so much blood, there's so much semen and pizza everywhere. It looks like there was a gang rape at a Papa John's. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's the hotel room is disgusting. I need, I need, uh, it, it, I need somebody watching out for me. Yeah. 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 I need that in my life a little bit. You wouldn't do well. I'm, in a I'm hotel getting, I'm getting yourself. more comfortable with, uh, my wife being more, more like vocal about like about <laughs> doing health choices and things like that. Okay. Yeah. It's something that I'm like, all right, it makes sense. Oh, like what? Like eating bad food or? Yeah, you know, I eat bad food and, you know, she's, she does a good job of not like, but she doesn't like nag me about it. But now it's, it's, it's at least if I have like three trips to Taco Bell in a week, she can be like, <laughs> what's going on? She just goes, what's going on? How's the, how, how's the bell? <laughs> how's the bell? <laughs> you, 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 did you get a job there? <laughs> well, it's hard because you don't want to be dishonest. Yeah. About it. So, like, I, I prize honesty. I, I, pri- I prize, uh, what is that? The prize? What am I thinking of? You prize honesty? Yeah. Does you that make prioritize. sense? prioritize. Prioritize. Yeah. I prioritize honesty above everything in a relationship. I think honesty and communication are key. But it's rough because it's like, I got I, 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 part of it is admitting when I'm uh, eating like shit. Yeah. I, I still can't let Liz talk about food to me. But there's other things that she uh, she is like she has permission to get get involved get get, get up in it. Well, Usually, here's the thing: you, is it's like you, uh, I'm I'm a little older than you, and I'll just say it's like you do get to this phase where you start going like, this person does want you to live and be healthy, and it's not yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. not they aren't like trying to ruin your fun time. They're legitimately like <laughs> just trying to ruin my fun. <laughs> Um, By the way, your wife has volunteered. She's stepping into a hornet's nest. She has volunteered to help us with the closet. She's interested in seeing if she could help you organize. We, I, we, I we, think we, it's insane. We have but. to We have to have a serious talk, me and Liz and Meredith, before she agrees to that. Because our, we, me and Liz fight. The, the one thing we fight about the most is cleaning up, Closets, like where do the shoes go? Like that style of organization. But you understand why that fight happens. Everybody get it gets in that fight. The organizational fight is a fight yeah. in every relationship, and it's because it just has so much weight. The marriage is crumbling. Well, <laughs> it's, no, it's <laughs> over. Liz. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Like we're when when Meredith and I like ta- we had a huge conversation about organization and cuz we we decide we're staying in the one bedroom apartment. Yeah, yeah. Uh because we don't we feel like the country's on fire so we have no idea if yeah. we'll ever be able to afford another place. But the goal is to stay in the one bedroom. So we start talking about okay, let's let's really st- we just, basically I think a lot of people do this. You just move in and when you're moving in you're just like anything goes anywhere. And then you're always like, well, one day we'll organize this. And for us, seven years later, we're like, all right, now maybe maybe we should like actually figure out like a good place for things. Where do things go? Where do things go? And especially just like, um, for me, I realized that a lot of it was like nece- things, uh, recognizing things that I use all the time. That I don't know if you have this. I have things I use all the time that I have in place. I had, I, I, I have since moved them, but I had them in places where it was like w- so annoying to reach. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It, like, it would be like, um, like our like uh, dry uh, 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 laundry detergent pods would just be like behind a pile of stuff. 
And so every time I'd be like, God damn it. And, you know, and like reaching behind this thing to grab it, then pull it out and put it back in. And it was just like the stuff that was in front of it was stuff I'd never use. So it was like just, just that yeah, level yeah. of organization. I don't know if you have anything that. I keep my toothbrush in the air duct. Yeah, that, that climb, would do it. I got to like yeah. Mission Impossible. Yeah. I'm claustrophobic too. I have panic attacks. Man, up there. that's just like the worst place you could keep it. I though. know. Yeah. Three times a day, I got to keep the keep these babies. Yeah, yeah. I Is don't it clean up there. No, no. Oh. Actually, I we did have to change the. But you just moved in, and that was the first yeah. spot you thought of, <laughs> and you just haven't chosen. I didn't. Place I didn't want it to get like kind of like uh, I have ADHD, so it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like yes. you have to be able to see it. Yeah. And I figure like I do spend a lot of time. You staring do hate up closet into, doors. Oh, that, yeah, I would like to have all closet doors removed yeah. and replaced with beads. Yeah. Something fun. Yeah, you want to be able to see, you you just don't, the doors in general. The, I don't like having to move a door mm. and then I can't see the other half of the closet. I'd like to be able to see the whole closet. So that's why, like, I need, I think I need something like a, like a cover. Like, a, you just go like, whoop, yeah, and it's just, everything's the open. The whole, everything is open. Yeah. This, it's stressful to me to have a halfway door like that. I don't like it. It's so weird because you know that's something from something. Yeah. Like you just don't know what that is, but you know that somewhere. I was pulled into a halfway, halfway closet, closet door. Closet door, and just shut it. and Three-way with two priests <laughs> and just fucking. I mean, I feel like you'd have, I feel like if that happened, I you, should would, remember you, would, I, you would tear down every closet <laughs> in your house. I don't think it would be just that you replaced No, it wouldn't them. be like a like a vague yeah. dislike yeah. of something. It would be you like pee your pants every time you see a closet. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like I don't I don't know what it is. It, it's it's a weird thing, but I've yeah, Liz got the last apartment we were in, I took out the closet doors. Well, I think it's before I think she it's moved speaks, in. I think it's the same thing as what I'm talking about. Like for me, that frustration of having to like move something to grab the thing that I want. Is, yeah. is very, there's something there for me. I think similarly, you not being able to see everything is bringing up some stuff, some organizational part of your brain that just is like mm. annoyed because it helps you to be able to see everything. This is... The- and it's similar to how you and I work differently when we were, when I was at house. Because you, your setup, you did use the two monitors. Do you still use two monitors? No, not anymore. Okay. But for a while, you had the two monitors. You're very much like, I need all the things. I need the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to, like, closing, opening, or, re- you know, for me, I would move yeah. between tabs or something. You know how that problem was fixed for me? Was my niece walked into the room and just destroyed my monitor. Oh, so you just were forced to. I was learn. just like, I'm not going <laughs> to fucking replace it. I'll just get used to the laptop. And now it's easier because, like, when I'm traveling, obviously you just throw the laptop. Is this the travel monitor or the ex- just an extra monitor? This is the travel monitor. The which one I, that you bought with your own money? No, 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 no. Okay. No, that was different. I didn't end up buying it. I know okay, what you're talking you're about. Buy, okay. I didn't buy that. I had like yeah. a big desktop computer yeah, yeah, yeah. that I was taking with me on planes yeah. so that I could have a second monitor. And I took it to the East Coast. I set it up. And literally like five minutes into the first day I had it, my three-year-old niece like walked into the room and just tripped over the cord and the and thing smashed down. on the Ugh. table. And it's just the worst because you're so mad and you can't be mad at anybody. No, because she like had her, she's like, my knee. I know. You <laughs> I'm like, my knee. fucking computer <laughs> is more important than your goddamn knee, which will immediately feel better if you have a lollipop. So yeah, it was, it was fine. Whatever. It ended up being a blessing in disguise. But, uh, Good. Uh, you you are looking for the childhood motivation. That kind of thinking. That's good for a therapist. Eric, want, you want to let's say, talk uh, about I'm, it? I'm I'm I should be open to talk about it. Go well, ahead. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. It's a very long journey. I think that's why I'm uncomfortable talking about it. Okay, it's well, going to be like ten years. So, so it's like ten year it journey. Feel, it feel, here's what it feels like. It feels like uh, it's the same thing when we talk about working out. And there's a part of us that's like, I may not ever. This is this may be the best I look for the rest. Of I may look back at this size and be like, Wow, you really, really <laughs> slim, buddy. You know, like my fear is I'll be like, I'm going back to school to uh, try and become a therapist, 
And then in two years, you'll be back on the podcast, and you will be. I'll, I'll be, be like, like, "I'm how are the how are the open mics yeah, last week?" I, yeah, I'll be like, "I think I think I'm gonna make it." <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think it's. I do. But no, I have to be comfortable with failure. So I, but, but I, you, at the same you, time, yeah. you also have to give yourself allow your endorphin rush to come in when you talk about it because that's the thing they've studied when people mm. talk about an aspirational thing they're about to do is yeah. they will oftentimes get the endorphins from talking about it that yes. they would actually doing it and that's why a lot of people are like they'll put a workout plan together and they'll be like i'm gonna do this on mondays this on tuesdays and like this is fucking great and they tell a friend and the friend's like oh congratulations they're like this fucking rules just eat a donut yeah (laughs) just so proud of themselves for making a plan so like i would say like feel good about making the plan but then you know you're gonna execute it you're gonna go you're gonna go in there i i'm excited to to see what what happens with it it's uh I don't know if you heard this, but the uh, entertainment industry is uh, dead. And uh, it was a pretty easy decision that I needed to have a real backup plan. Yeah. And you're just, you're I was fine without one for a long time because I, the backup plan was sales, customer service, things that, but those stopped paying money and um, then, and became like hard to get, which they used to be the easiest yes, job in the true. world to get. That is true. And then, uh, this past year, I just was like, I don't want to be, uh, I'm 42 now. I was like, I don't want to be 52 being like, I got like, <laughs> I don't even know what it would be like. I got a great to, script. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? And the yeah. thing is, it's not that I'm going to stop writing or creating or doing stand up or comedy or anything. It's just that I don't want to be 52 years old if I have not f- found success as a writer, like I literally have had, uh, a, 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 I'm still doing writing and I've been getting paid to write. So it's not like I'm stopping that. It's yeah, just yeah. that I'm on, just don't, it's just not enough money. I wrote for this awards show uh, a month or two ago and it was just like, it was nice. But it was just like, that's just who's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. random. I don't know if I'll get, uh, you know, what you'll get from this. And I've had a couple writing jobs where it's just like, I'm at the desk that I do my normal job from. And I'm like, I'm like, ooh, I'm writing on this thing. And then I like hit send. And then I'm just immediately like the screen for my work pops up, right? I'm like, was I just, was that a writer's room? That just, I people, I was talking to people for a little bit. Yeah. But it's like. It's it's just the I think the experience that like would have been cool of like I'm writing on a show that exists that people like that's just harder and harder to come. We don't got to talk about this shit. Everybody, yeah, I know. Every, everybody, everybody fucking week, yeah. gets it. It yeah. is what it is. But um, I, I will say this. You once told me that the happiest you would be in life was if you were like sitting on some sort of throne and people would come in. And you would just give advice all day. No, no, no. My dream is to be a babbling, incoherent professor, <laughs> like like an adjunct professor. My okay. dream would have been to succeed so well as a comedy writer that they offer me some sort of teaching job. But this isn't the dream you expressed to me. The babbling professor, this might be like, maybe it's morphing. Oh, the dream maybe you it, told me was yeah. just that you were successful enough where you would just, you literally said a throne. You'd be sitting on a throne <laughs> and people would just come in and you would give advice. Yeah, like King Solomon. <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly what it was. Um, so I wouldn't mind that. That would be great. I'm saying this is I don't like, know how that... This uh, is kind of like, you're getting close. You're getting like, close. This is kind of what, this is down yeah. that road a little bit. No, well, now the dream would be, yeah, to be, uh, now the dream, the dream has been for a few years to be, about to eventually be at some beautiful college campus where Palestinian protesters <laughs> where you get blocked from the student union when they realize you're Jewish and you have to some blue haired psycho babbles to you about some shit that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, good plan, Rob. <laughs> Well, look, dream, what a, it's dreams a good, change. What, what, a, what a good yeah, time for yeah, a Jew to be yeah, getting into not academia. Not <laughs> um, but anyways, the original dream before all this yeah. happened was the uh, that, yeah, I would become, you know, you had these uh, classes you took where the professor, people could barely understand what they were saying. And then yeah. you know, just like hoping that the test or what the assignment was going to be easy. And uh, yeah, I'd just be able to, to, to ramble about whatever I want. 
That would be fun. I had a yeah. Well, I in high school I had a teacher. Here's like, how it would go. I would I would be it would okay. be writing one on one. I would right. uh, talk about my accolades, writing for Adventure Beast on Netflix, a show everybody knows. <laughs> yes. Yo, throw in the comments your favorite Adventure Beast <laughs> <laughs> episode. Um, and then I would uh, it would I would be like, oh, you can start with the hero's journey. <laughs> of course. Um, did anybody see it's Prime Week on Amazon? <laughs> I'm gonna get a new blender. The one I have is fine, but it just feels cheap, and I don't like that. I want to know that my ice is being crushed by something that feels more industrial. <laughs> and it would be that for an hour, and at the end, I'd be like, "So make sure to study up, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll see you again to, uh, in two days." And every student would be right. Like, I, it would be that type of professor who every rate my professor is just, he's the worst. I don't know what he's the worst, yeah, yeah. but yeah, he'll never get fired. Well, it was, um, I had a teacher in high school like that who is a Catholic high school. So Catholic high schools have like, a, if you get to 30 years, they just kind of like, they won't, they won't fire you. If you like, you'll just stay there forever. There was a couple nuns that just were there forever. Yeah. I remember this one nun that would walk around with a bone. She had a bone, like a like a big bone on a necklace and she would like, if you were talking in the hallway, she would just hit you with it. I think you were in a biker gang. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I forgot. This was, this was a, a lucid, this was like a lucid dream where I was in Sons of Anarchy. Oh yeah. Okay. No, no, this is my high school. She had an actual, she had an actual bone. That she would, she would hit, hit you with. with. Okay. Yeah. And then there was, there was this other nun that I actually had as a teacher that was great, but she was one of those grandfathered in teachers. And then this third guy, Who's he's he's now dead, but he was like maybe like seventy ish when I was in high school, and he was fuck he was legitimately crazy, and he would get in class and he would just he would rant like he was a, he was a history class we were supposed to be learning about like the fucking French Revolution or something, and he'd be talking like in these metaphors that made no sense he'd be like you know Jesus Christ reveals himself. In the light, but the light is through the glass darkly. This is what I'm talking yeah. about. What a great, he was literally. So, so, so I found my notebook from that class when I like was home a couple years ago and I was reading through the notes. I look like a fucking crazy person <laughs> trying to track what he was saying. <laughs> and I remember like, I remember like you'd get the test. It would be like, well, you know, what did fucking. Anne Boleyn do, and you'd be like, the glass darkly reflects through the hollow prism of our hearts. Like, you would literally just <laughs> say insane shit that made no sense, and you'd be like, he'd get it back like 98. Like, if you read through that notebook right now, it's actually the Da Vinci Code, <laughs> and you can... Find like, this sort you of turn Excalibur it upside down, and yeah. it's like got like the, the key <laughs> to all civilization. Yeah, no, it's fucking. It was in, it was an insane. He was an insane guy, and people also people liked him because well, that's he, what it is. As long as uh, you know, you can get an A in the class if you just repeat the crazy shit he said. And that's what it is. It just becomes a thing where you realize you're like, with teachers, they're so they're they're so preoccupied about in their it, when teachers are new. I think it's hard, like when you're a new teacher. But yeah, once yeah. you've like got, I mean, obviously tenure is the best. But even just like once you've you've established that you're like fine and they don't and the administration doesn't have to worry about you then yeah. you're just like can be you're left just alone, you're, you're just part of the fabric of that yeah. place yeah i remember i i had a, especially at like private institutions i'm sure yeah like my sister's a public school teacher and it's not that's insane who, it's, who, who it, knows who knows how that fucking labyrinth is it supposed is to work. W wild the well what's crazy is like all the um you know what she had to buy what this is really dark what? She had to buy, so they do these lockdowns for mass shootings now. It's like a regular part of school. We, yeah, do, yeah. I didn't have them. Did you have lockdown? No. Drills? No. Yeah, I think this, I mean, this only became common after the 400th <laughs> school shooting where they were like, <laughs> oh, I guess we should do something. Yeah. Um, so now they have the lockdowns. And literally, like anything can cause a lockdown. If there's if somebody's on campus that no one recognizes, it could be a lockdown. Yeah. And sometimes it can take like they don't they don't tell you when it's over or when it's gonna be over because they don't know. So they'll literally just be like, you lock your room, you're not allowed to leave, and you could be there for 
hours. So she was like, she was like, you guys need to provide like some sort of like toilet situation. If we're going to be in, you got a room of 25 people, somebody's going to have to go to the bathroom and they, and they don't have anything for them. So, yeah. um, she bought for herself a, a like emergency bathroom kit. It's like a bucket and like this tent that goes over it. And she's just like, if, I've seen those. Yeah. But so basically like if somebody, if you, cause you could have a lockdown and you just have to, if you take a shit, you just be like, Oh my God. Could you imagine, <laughs> could, you imagine? Could, you ima- could you imagine being fucking 10 years old, all the embarrassment you already feel at that age <laughs> Just stepping into a tent and taking a loud farty shit in front of like everybody in the class, <laughs> and the teacher's like, "Don't pay li- everybody stop, stop laughing, laughing. stop laughing, <laughs> stop laughing, <laughs> stop laughing." There's oh a, my god! There's a gunman, <laughs> please stop! <laughs> oh my god, he's coming! No, that's no. just me. I'm sorry. We had nachos last night. What a fucking embarrassing. What well, what a nightmare! I mean, she bought it partially for herself. It's like out of all the people, it's just yeah. like probably the you know the teacher might have to take a shit. It, it should it should come with music, like like like. I'm like, gonna tell her that. Like you you go. She into, should just have a Bluetooth speaker. The second you step into the, yeah. but it it should have to play like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the second you step into the tent, it just starts playing like Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is there anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that, man. That's that's a great invention. Kind of a sad way to have to. When have she it. said it at first, I was like, I was like, you're you're being nuts, right? Like, and then when she explained, she's like, the lockdowns. Like, she's already been in lockdowns that I think last an hour. Yeah. So it's like, it's not crazy that if it's a real lockdown, they could mm, be yeah. stuck in there for a while. And I guess other teachers have bought this thing too. So, um, dark yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's dark. Is it? It's not as dark as people think it is. Progressive, well, look, progressives think it is much darker than it is. It's in the middle. Progressives it, think it's darker than conservatives pro- do? Conservatives think there's a... Shadow government <laughs> eating babies. I guess it's dark for both. Yeah. I, I'm only, look, I'm only, I'm in the liberal bubble out here and I'm annoyed yeah. by it, but I'm in it. You really aren't though. Like where you live, this part of North Hollywood, this is definitely not. Oh yeah. This is Trump country. You, what are you talking about? You feel like this is liberal? Of course. Yes, okay. dude. Of course it is. You have to get to like fucking, I don't, I don't even, well, I don't even Burbank, know. Well, like, you've driven along Magnolia. It's like 10 gun shops. Yeah, for liberals to shoot each other when there's mm, a riot, not yeah. for not for Trump people. I'm sure if you get out to like, have you and Liz talked about owning a gun and what? What? Yes. When? When would that happen? She doesn't want any part of gun ownership or totally even like access to the gun. Yeah, 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 I I will sleep with it. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. I'll use it as a pillow. Yeah, and I'll have I'll safety off in my hand in the trigger. Yeah, and I'll just I'll a single sound I'll. Put a couple rounds in yeah. the fucking in wall. Liz in the dog, of and, <laughs> and then out of sadness, you'll kill yourself. Oh, of course, <laughs> gun ownership. Well, that was the thing. It's like um, every time we talked about it, especially there was like moments in the pandemic where it was like, it was like, wow, things are like you know, it was like that moment where we were yeah. all like, what's happening? Like we went to the grocery store, there was no eggs, and it started being like. Are we like, I just, I remember having conversations with my sister being like, how do I know? Like, cause she's a history teacher. I'm like, how do I know when things are bad? Like when are things real bad? And when are things just like annoying? We're, we're upset that a thing is happening. Yeah. Like a bread line would suck if we were, if we enter that stage where it's just like food yeah. is, you know, you get your, but even that is like, okay, but I can, I can think I can live life that way. But well, I, I just like, read the fucking road. Oh, you read God. the road? Well, yeah, of course. That's uh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Enough, Cormac. Yeah. Yeah. What the he fuck really, is wrong with that yeah, guy? Yeah. Fuck him. Because <laughs> it's, that, just, it's insane. I, like, what, what, why is he creating that art? Um, I think at the time it was probably, I mean, my guess is it was more a cautionary tale. When did he write what? it? I think early 2000s. What was it a cautionary? What was going on in 2000? I think it was just in general. Like, I don't know. I really... 
Who knows? Know. It's just I was look. That's a that's a that's not the fun apocalypse. The fun apocalypse is no, like no, no, that's there's the fun apocalypse is to me the fun apocalypse is yeah. the Walking Dead, where like hey I get my arm chopped off because a zombie bit me, but now it's replaced with like a a cannon and I get to fucking pump rounds into you know Negan like that shit's fun. And, like, you get to build a new society, and this guy's got a tiger for some reason. No, I'll like, tell you, the fun, fun. Ap- the fun apocalypse to me was Waterworld. I've never seen Waterworld all the way through. Oh, it's so I mean, it's, fun. it's, it's universally... It's such a cons- fun movie. It's considered, like, one of the worst movies of all time, correct? No, no, no. It just didn't... It, it didn't crush at the box office, and then... I think it did. It made it. It did. Make, it did make a profit. It ended up making okay. a profit in like DVD sales and stuff. It's a really fun movie. I think you'd like. It's, it. They're all on water. There's no land. Yeah. So basically, the entire Earth is covered in water now. Okay. So everybody has anybody who's alive has either um, has either like built some sort of floating home or lives on a boat or something like that. And okay. then uh, the most precious things, obviously, are like gasoline. Um, dirt is very precious, and Kevin Cosner is a half fish man. He evolved. Uh, Say no more. Yeah, you I don't want to know it. anything else. I'm gonna watch it. I it love sounds, it. It sounds amazing. I love it. It's one of those movies that, when it came out, it was so panned because it is ridiculous. But it's one. There, it's so fun. I've seen it multiple times. It's a fun movie. It's so stupid. Yeah, he's half fish. He's got gills behind his ears from evolution. There's only one way that happens. <laughs> There's only one way that happens. Well, they don't talk about, yeah, fish fucking. That's they, the, <laughs> it's someone just fucking, <laughs> just fleshlighted a, I mean, a live carp. I feel like they <laughs> would talk about it if they if they were going to do it. I mean, if you're going to make... He drinks his own urine at one point. Why wouldn't you make that... If you're going to make an insane movie where there's a guy with gills... Why not just be you like... You have to be at like... At some point, we would just start fucking fish, and apparently, it's one type of fish. And you're like, it was pretty good. It was pretty good times. And you know what? It's yeah. still good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Dennis Hopper plays an amazing bad guy. Oh, he's guy. the... Ba- oh, okay. Uh, well, you're, so really, you're really selling the fuck out of the movie. I would I'd watch Dennis it with Hopper. you. It's so fun. Is this guy coked out, Dennis Hopper, or... Uh, it could not really. Listen, I always think of like, I mean, it's older Dennis Hopper, so he's not. He's, okay, he's probably calmed like down a little bit, but he's Dennis really Hopper. chewing the scenery. It's a ridiculous great. performance. Great, so it's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely a movie that I feel like would have like crushed if it came out in like uh, the two thousands. Sure, something, because we were ready for that type of wackiness. You, wa- you want to know the most unfun Dennis Hopper movie is he plays. Uh, Bowser in the the Super Mario Brothers movie, like the the live action one. From I the have 90s. actually never seen the live action. You never Super watch it. It's well, not- yeah, because I was I was as even as a kid, I remember being like so mad that this was because we had just had the Turtles, which you and I have discussed is one of the best movies ever. It's yeah. incredible. Like uh, on on like review, what they did is so incredible. They really did bring the cartoon to life in a really cool yeah. way. Even as a kid, I was like, this is really It, it, it also cool. holds up And it's like kind of dark, and it, it's just cool. Dark, but not like it doesn't take you out of the reality. It still has the to. pizza jokes. It yeah, still has, it's, it's all the stuff you want from the turtles. It's like the perfect movie. Michelangelo spins the nunchucks on his fingers. <laughs> and, and memory yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so great. I'm going to watch it. Uh, this is making me want to watch it right now. So it's great. so great. But then they come out with the Mario Brothers, which maybe they came out with before, but I feel like it was after. And yep. I remember being so just mad. Yeah. Because I was like, we all know what Mario and Koopa and like uh, uh, Bowser look like. We know what Yoshi looks like. And this is just yeah. a crazy choice. So I don't even understand. It's like I the don't dino- think- the. Sorry, you go. Yeah, ahead. no, no, I, I haven't seen it, so I have no idea. They, what. they don't, they didn't know how to make those movies. Those movies weren't a thing. But the Turtles did it. But that, I don't know what year that came out. I, Mario's could have been before, but even if it was, there was one movie that was like that. I don't even know if the Turtles movie did well when it came out. That it could did, be. It definitely did. Well, you think it, it did? Yeah, they had the second one. They had yeah, multiple. That, that, they had the true. third one. It's like Turtles in Time. You, you remember who was Shredder in the second one? Kevin Nash, no. the wrestler, was Shredder. Was he 
the Shredder the whole time, or yeah, was he no, Mega the, Shredder? It, he's Mega Shredder because yeah. Shredder dies in the first one. Yeah, but he, c- he he's like the first the original Shredder is like yeah. a Japanese man. Yeah, 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 that and him and the rat, and then they fight on the rooftop. Yes, and then Casey Jones goes, "Oops!" and yeah. kills him. One uh, of the hilarious darkest oh. such an amazing kids movie a kids movie that ends with a guy going yeah. oops and yeah. crushing and amanda crushing death. a man who has already been defeated <laughs> easily 100 percent could be arrested was thrown off the building yeah. landed in trash yeah. humiliated yeah. no he he yeah. that he dies a horrible death yeah. again something that they just you just can't have that kind of fun now yeah, that's wild that's good old-fashioned fun it's so weird how that's shifted because it's like there's certain things that they allow and yeah, it's just because that was a PG movie, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. a movie for children, and it's not like the thing is like none of us were fucked up by it. Nobody's fucked up by like. I mean, I remember being like, "Dear God!" Like as a kid, <laughs> being like, like the well, concept really... of being crushed inside of a garbage <laughs> truck is horrifying. It just didn't bother me it, at the time. Because they it didn't did bo- a great job with the yeah tone of it. Yeah. I thought. Uh, to me, I like those those movies that like you go back to childhood. The, you know, my childhood, where it's the kids are in danger. There's adults trying to kill them, like really making an effort to kill these kids. But the kids are evading it and also kind of having fun. Yeah, Goonies, yeah, Goonies. But it's a lot yeah. of it's a lot of e- E.T. They're getting yes. chased by the f- no E.T. They- e. was I mean not one of my favorite movies, and, but yeah. it was so terrifying. When it's they were scared. being when they were legitimately being chased, like it was the first time I'd seen the government be kind of the bad guy in it. Yeah. And it was it was uh, I remember being like, and then they they tried to they replaced the guns with like walkie talkies and like a digital. Did you ever remember that? Don't even get me fucking yeah. started, and dude. So, there was a I, I talked about this on the pod before, but there was a somebody was somebody on Love Is Blind. Like in real life, like pulled a gun on a chick, or like she, uh, somebody accused him of doing that. And it was the, I was watching the girl make the accusation on TikTok, and she's going, and then guys, he came into the bathroom, and all of a sudden, there's a pew pew in my face. A pew pew. They and told her she couldn't say gun or something? She just chose to say pew pew instead of gun. Pew pew sounds so much worse. So, pew pew yeah, sounds. Yeah, I'm not thinking gun. That's what she meant. I get it. And I showed it to Liz. I was like, yeah. why Why is she saying pew pew? Is she saying gun? And she, Liz goes, yeah, on TikTok you can't say gun or they'll demonetize oh, it. Oh, yeah. So you have and to I was say like, like Oh, so they're just making or, us yeah. all sound like fucking infants. Yeah, it's weird. Like we all have to talk like we're six. I used to watch movies where people held guns at kids and shot at them in caves and the kids got away. But we can't say pew pew in a story about a gun. We have, to, or we, have to, we have to. It's just fucking weird. Well, it's also weird because it's like on the same device you can pull up the most horrific things you'd. You know, it's like just because you're not on TikTok. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So okay, TikTok is not allowing you to see something horrific. Go to the internet. Yeah, I can watch that dude from California blow his head off in a press conference, and then go onto TikTok and be like, "Oh, but, thank God they're saying pew pew." Yeah, uh, Bud Dwyer. <laughs> yeah. Never forget that name. <laughs> It's so it's it's a wild video. It's a wild video. Hey, hey, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He does like assure people yeah. before he blows his brains yeah, out yeah, in front yeah. of them. Okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Panically shoot your fucking head off. Uh, Dan Saint Germain had a joke where he said that if he was ever gonna kill himself, he'd just walk around town with a gun and uh, he'd wait till somebody he knew saw him and said, "How's everything going, Dan?" <laughs> <Just blows. laughs> he go, it's going great. <laughs> and then he blows. His it's a Nick uh, Swartzen joke too. Nick Swartzen was like, I'd, "I'd go in a crowd, and then I would just yell really loud, who fucking farted?'" <laughs> <laughs> so they'd be like, "Oh my god, that guy!" He said, "Who farted?" Oh my god, plug your nose, dude. This dude just killed himself. <laughs> Who uh, fucking farted? Is Nick Schwartzen all right? Last time I saw Nick I don't know, man. He was like... I hope he's all right. He's like, he's still doing shows. But you gotta like, you gotta taper that off. You know what I mean? I think he's past that point. I uh, who, a, who fucking knows? I, I think mean, you hit that point where you're like... Because the... What's his name? The um, Smash Mouth guy, too. He, he, Smash Mouth died? 
Yeah, he died. He drank himself to death. When? Like recently? It was like a couple of years ago. He was like, oh, I didn't know but that. he'd been like, they didn't say, I shouldn't say they, definitively they haven't said that, but basically his symptoms were very clearly related to yeah. drinking too much. It's hard. You know, uh, uh, Coldplay, lead singer? Yeah. He's addicted to pussy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's how he died. That's how. <laughs> He's been replaced by yeah. a new Coldplay. One of the greatest concerts I ever saw was Coldplay was in it. It was so good. Who 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 else was I, in? I, I think I, uh, it was uh, Good Charlotte, System of a Down, Coldplay, and Nickelback. That's a great concert. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, it was so good. I love Coldplay. I think Coldplay is one of those bands that, uh, similar to Nickelback and Creed and these just bands, where it's just like, if you heard them, if you were in a bar and they're like, uh, you know, there's a band fix, playing tonight. It fix you. If some guy just sitting playing. Yeah, he's just like playing these songs. You'd be like, who? This guy's incredible. This same with amazing. same with any of the Creed or Nickelback songs. You just yeah, you'd be yeah. like, this guy's incredible. But they reach a certain level of success. And it you becomes like, yeah. And I don't know why some people get to avoid that and some people don't. It's, it's weird. I think it's the people who aren't poppy enough where people accept them as just pop. Yeah. Like the like, black keys. Yeah. Yeah. The black keys are very popular. Yeah. You know, like, but no one's going to be like fucking hacks. No, because it's, they're not popular enough. I think if you're a Creed or Nickelback or, um, uh, Coldplay or like Maroon Five, like it's like these bands that you get so big. Yeah. Now you're in the realm of the you know Lady Gaga's and uh, all those people, and it's yeah, like you, everybody's you, brain breaks as to what you are, as opposed to just being. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, "Yeah, their music sucks. It's lame, and it's this. And it's like." Because you heard it too much, like yeah, yeah, because it got played too much on the radio yeah. or suggested to you on Spotify. But nobody says that about like. I guess people do say it about pop stars. I don't know. It just feels like that's like something reserved specifically for like musicians. Musicians who make it too big. Yeah, yeah. But it happens to comedians too. It happens to everybody. I mean, yeah. that that's the that's the arc. Is you want to? They want to. You want to get there. High, I mean, you got to enjoy. You crash. It. The, the thing, the real trick is to just enjoy it. It's the guys that like can't enjoy it that it's like, like I think the guy from Smash Mouth that seemed like couldn't enjoy being known for singing um, "Walking on the Sun" and yeah. the Shrek uh, cover song. Like to me, it's like I think that plays into it. Like you have to go. Yeah. I am now family man, pop guy. Do you I remember? Do you remember the the band Drowning Pool? Yeah, of course. Bodies hit the floor. Yeah, of course. That guy died. From what? Pussy? P- p- <laughs> <laughs> fucking overdose. No, that guy did not overdose on pussy. <laughs> that guy fucking probably heroin. Oh. I think he maybe killed himself. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's dead. But he... <laughs> No, but this, let's put, let's set the record straight. This guy did not <laughs> fuck himself to death. I don't know how he died, but but definitely wasn't from fucking. Definitely wasn't from pussy. That's important. No, no. I think he. It doesn't matter. I, my point was is like that would suck to be. What's like, really crazy is his body floated up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like Jesus. Well, it just, like he went into. No, it just didn't hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Except mine. <laughs> he fucking he butt Dwyer'd into the sky. No, he th- th- that band could have kept going. Like he died after the one hit. He didn't even get the chance to let that become his thing. That kind of sucks. Like you should at least get to ride. To die as you're about to go on the ride is fucking tragic. That sucks. Maybe. I mean, a lot of us didn't even come close to the ride. Yeah, but we have, like, you know, we have... We have a dog. We have a dog. <laughs> we have an, a wife that we love. You know, there's other things that we no, have. No, that's why you got to focus on things that have nothing to do with that. Your life can't be about that. Robert De Niro, I saw, he, they did, like, a round table thing, and he... uh he said something great, which was just, like, you can't enjoy... He was basically like, you can't enjoy the, the highs. Everything has to be here. He's yeah. like, the highs, he's like, he, he's just like, he says, like, I've seen too many people who succeed, and it's 
like he's like you just have to maintain and care about the things in your life that you care about and then just be like happy that this part of your life is going well and that's why uh he's been married four times yeah and has panic attacks on TV about Trump because he's completely fine. Yeah, everything's this, good. Everything's fine. He's figured well, it, it out. Well, it sounded like good advice. He just didn't listen to it. <laughs> no. Everybody can give good advice. It's if can you take your own advice and let your let- I think he does take his own. I I want to say like I agree. Obviously, he struggles with relationships. Yeah. More more than that, he's probably uh you know, he's just a movie star fucking he just probably can't stop fucking. Yeah. Didn't he just have a kid? He did. That's wild. It's immoral. Because you're basically like, good luck, son. Good or, luck. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah I had want, a friend who... Uh, you want to play, play catch with my decomposing skull because I'm dead by the time you're in Little League? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Wrap it up, get a little snip snip, and then you can fuck. Yeah, it is wild to not... I think it. it's probably also just surprising you can still have a child at that age. Like you're like at some point it has to stop working, but I guess it just never does. Never stops. It's so it's so crazy that this women don't <laughs> that men it just never stops. And with women it's like very clear cut off. It point. stops. Yeah, well it's like we remember when Hugh Hefner would you know, he had to have like twelve, twenty five year old hot chicks just like jerking him off in a circle. You remember that? No. You were never there for that? No, I wasn't. I'm saying it like it's this known thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just read that that's what he did okay. he, when he was older. It's like, you know, he used to have like orgies and stuff, but when he's old, he would just like go, uh, <laughs> just quietly, <laughs> like these women would just like encourage him in a circle. I just don't understand. Like, isn't there a point when you're like, I'm not like. But apparently no. Like to me, I, I talk about this. I've talked about this before, but it's like whenever, like the older I get, my fantasies are not like me fucking now. My fantasies are me fucking while I'm in really good shape. You know, like, yeah. my, like more of my fantasies are just about me being healthy than they are. Like, I can't imagine being around uh, anyone who's under the age of like 30. Yeah. And being 75 and not feeling just terrible about myself. But I don't, I, I don't know if I share that. Really? Not if it's consensual and two people want to fuck. It's yeah, but like, don't you just look at yourself and be like, this is gross. Like, this shouldn't be touching. Like, there's there's something probably, disgusting it's, about it's that. It's probably like the same thing where you're like. I'm know, not saying the immoral. I'm not talking about immoral. I'm just saying. The thing I said that was. I'm a, saying this. It, it, you say you, your it, thing. I say my thing. Okay. Look, it just got brighter. Sorry. Keep I don't going. think. No, I think. Um, no, I, I'm just saying like, I to me. I have enough shame, I think, where I wouldn't enjoy it. I think I would enjoy it. You wouldn't. There's not a part By of the you way. This uh, this will never happen. And of course, my wife and I we're gonna live forever. Of course. And then when we do die, it'll be in a big. It's, it'll yeah. be like a plane crash or something where we go at the same time. The, mm-hmm. the notebook, whatever. But just generally speaking, you don't. I don't think you. Th- when you're 75, you're probably not thinking of yourself as a 75 year old. In the same way that when you're like, dude, when, I'm 42. I think of myself as like a 60 year old. Do you? Yes. I think of myself as like a 25-year-old. Oh, I, that's what I picture in my head. Okay. So, like, I'm that's not... That's insane. Why? Because you're not 25. I'm, but I feel young. I feel young. <laughs> you should not. Why should I not? Because you are not. I don't want to be... I don't want to live old. I want to live, live in young. reality. But reality... If you're 75 and a 30-year-old wants to fuck you, that's reality. She doesn't. But maybe she does. No. Maybe, did you? Do you have something? Do you have a nice house? Do you have a? Yes, she wants money. Great. <laughs> Sounds like we both agree. <laughs> What's wrong with that? If it's consent, if somebody if wants, if you're paying for it, if you are clear, if there's a clear pay payment, then I guess yeah. that's fine. If you're when like, I was saying something was immoral about De Niro. I wasn't saying like fucking a chick that got. No, pregnant. I wasn't talking. You I said was immor- that was not what. That was not when you said immoral. Yeah, I, I said you having said, a kid at you're that age. You're talking that was wrong. immoral, but then you said something else about immoral that I. Well, no, I'm saying right. I don't see a moral component to like dating somebody younger as long as they're an adult. That's not what I'm saying. I, yeah. I just think it. I wouldn't be. It wouldn't make me feel good about myself. I wouldn't enjoy. Yeah, it. I can. I the can, whole time I'd be like, I'm a, I'm a creepy old man, and this is a young person who should just be fucking other young people. If they're thirty, I'm like. I think we're good. 
The only you, way well, I, know, what you said that made sense was if it was if it was paid, if it was full on paid, you were like I, and a good pay. <laughs> She's fucking a seventy five year old. Yeah, I think it's with tip. I think you're being very generous. I think you're like. I think bare minimum, she's walking out of there with like fifteen hundred dollars. That would be yeah, like on yeah. the low end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, it, well, if we're gonna get into this, the payment, we're gonna have to talk about the things that are being done. I don't think it's like a straight up like a lot of those sugar. Yeah, you're da- right. It should be like a negotiation. A lot of those sugar daddy situations yeah. are not like, hey, you suck my dick. I give you five thousand dollars. That's not how it works. Oh, you know but how sugar daddies work? I actually do know how it works. How? Really? Yeah. I was at a comedy show, uh-huh. and uh, a girl came up to me afterwards, and we, she like liked the show, and she was like, are you drinking after? I was like, yeah. And I went over, and I'm not going to do anything because like, I'm married. But my friend who was there was like, who's that chick? I'm like, dude, talk to her. She's Who's your friend? Who is this? I'm not going to say who it was. Okay. But he went outside and hooked up with her. <laughs> okay. And then... Found out that she was a whatever, a sugar, like had a sugar daddy. And he told me about it. And he was like, this is what her situation is. And the situation is like, when this guy is in town, they hang out. And afterwards, he just gives her, her his credit card. And he's like, yeah, okay, do what you want. And it's not like, it's not like a, I'm paying you. for. It's just like a calmly understood thing. That like, when I'm around, we hang out, we have a good time. And I take you to nice things. And you can go buy yourself some stuff. And... Yeah, if she went too wild and crazy with it, he'd probably just go, okay. Then the next time he comes to town, he doesn't call her. But it's like, it's just like a understood thing. And when they were going after Hugh Hefner, like all these ladies are like, it was wrong. And I'm like, did you not know that that was the agreement or that's like the underlying thing when you're fucking a 80-year-old dude and you're like 26 years old? Like... Obviously, like that's the that's the agreement that you're entering into. I, to me, it doesn't strike me as like I can see where it's creepy, but I'm also like if people that, if people are seeing a first mutual of all, benefit, I've, never, out of I've it. not said it's creepy I, as much. Maybe I did, but I, did. I what I mean was it's more like just a, it's an upsetting image to me. Of course, it's an upsetting image. Yeah. That is true. It is definitely an upsetting image. Yeah. But I also feel like. You know, like if, I've I've watched enough porn and yeah. I've seen porns where it's like the guy's too old. Sure, and there's a feeling when you it's like I can't enjoy yeah. that. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you're just like I know she doesn't want to be fucking this guy. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe I shouldn't put that on everybody. Maybe but I maybe just they like, do. Maybe this maybe some ladies are, do actually like to fuck really old dudes because yeah. they feel like they're probably like this could be his last. I just they're like taking from a my little, personal standpoint the looking. Like the, the just the seeing myself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Would do you ever like, like to watch like you know like when you do like an hourglass and the sands leaving, mm-hmm. yeah. and you like when the last of the sand is coming, you get really excited. You're like, uh, oh, it's it's almost done, it's almost, and then it goes. No, no, I've never. Done you never that. like watch a just watching I guess an hour. Watched an hourglass. Yeah. I'm sure. Do you never feel excited as it gets close? You're like, oh my god, it's at the end. Or even like when you used to put the those coins in the big well, round the coin, thing, yeah, and it would yeah, get really course. close to the yeah, end before yeah, yeah. it falls into that's not nothingness. Sand, sand, I don't know. The sand doesn't. Get that, f- that well, the coin about yeah. to fall. It's gonna fall at any moment. Yeah. It's gonna go. That's probably like fucking an old dude. Because at any point, at he any could point, die. he's just gonna go into oblivion and be dead, <laughs> and you're like, it could be now. <laughs> like, there's probably a you're rush. Saying there's like a rush to like, I might fuck this guy <laughs> I to could death. Fuck this dude to yeah. death. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's got to right. be kind of an interesting feeling. Yeah, I don't know. I've never fucked an old lady and been like, she's if she's liking too much. I'm like, is she liking it or is she? Is this the end? Yeah, every old lady you fucked, you knew they were liking it. I knew that. I made yeah. sure. Yeah. But you can't be, a, if they're really old, you can't be 100% sure. They could just be having a heart attack. I mean, that's, I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. I guess I would. You know, but by the way, there's a rule for this. We don't have to debate the age. Oh, yeah. People if you're say 80 years it. old, it's, it's divide your age and add seven. It's divide your age by two. Yeah. Divide your age in half. In half and then add seven. Add seven. So you're 75, 37 and a half. Plus seven. Plus seven. 44. So you couldn't fuck a 25. You're right. Well, you said 30. Okay. No, you're saying 25, I thought. Uh, so I thought you said 30. Okay. Old. But uh, either way, 
Yes, you're right. If you're if you're 75 yeah. and you're fucking a 30 year old, you are missing the cutoff by 12 years. Um, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I like that that math. But I don't think I don't think, think, I don't think it's odd. I think it's just uh, if you're doing if you do break but the I'm rule not, again. I am not against yeah, it, it, people of age wanting to have sex with older people. I am just like per, my personal preference is like I don't think I would yeah, enjoy yeah. it. I think there'd be a part of me that would be too uh, co- too conscious of the like d- just it, it would just feel weird, I guess. Yeah, you want to keep it age, keep the ages close. Yeah, and then like you're yeah. done, and you're like, what are you t- the the talking about it? The guys who marry young women, that shit blows my mind. Is that someone? Don't, don't you think it keeps you young a little bit? It keeps you a little more connected to what's going on. If you, if you date somebody that's your age, it's like you have all the same references, you know? But, like, how are you really going to know what it means <laughs> to slay? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. Yeah, like, of course. No, it's really important. I mean, I think about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, the That's other, why these guys do it. It's out of the goodness of their heart to create <laughs> cross-generational the communication. Other, by, by the way, the other thing is, like, I, I would be cool dating a woman older than me too. I think it's just like I don't I think most guys will get fucked by who wants to fuck them. So if somebody's like wants to fuck you and they're hot, I think you'll say yes to anybody. Most I think most guys are like that. I think most younger guys. I think older guys most older guys are more What about older rich guys? I think most older rich well, guys a, would but that's happily a different, I, 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 I don't think it's older rich guys, but I think there are older rich guys who that was, Larry David had a great bit, like a talk showy bit that yeah. he was like, he was saying, he's like, he would never want to date because, you know, he got divorced and then he was dating. He's like, I don't want to date anybody who, it, it, they were like, the host was like, so like, are you worried about women who want to date you just for your money? Everyone knows you're like really rich. And he goes, he goes, I wouldn't want to date anyone who didn't want to date me. He's like, I don't want to date. What else are you dating me for? <laughs> like, what other reason are you dating me? Like, and it was just that so like hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, look, this is all a moot point. I'm very happy in my, my marriage, but I just, I guess I like, my thought is like, I like bill check. Well, right? here's what's, here's what about what's bill check. You see what bill check. Yeah. It looks insane. It looks insane. Insane dude. But there's not a part of you that goes like, all right, Belichick still got it. He's keeping up. No. There's no part of you that thinks that? Not at all. Really? No. Okay. I look at Belichick and that girl, and it's literally... It looks insane. It looks insane. How old is she? I think she's like 22. I mean, she might be <laughs> no, older, but she's she... like 20. I think she's like mid-20s. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not been crazy, what's man. The, what's the math on his? His should be 42. She's 22. I mean, look, the, fa- look, the, the one that everybody is... The Dane Cook one is pretty rough. Oh, he was like, how old was she? I mean, he was 40. Is that rougher than Bill Belichick? Yeah. It is? His is rougher. They met when she was 17. Didn't do anything. She was a daughter of his friend. I like the chair is doing it on her end. Yeah. Do you, have you seen yes, her situation? That's a, great, that's a great example. And she, but she's being, but she's being, it sounds like she's being honest about it too. It sounds like she's like, this is a situation and I don't. She just wants to get fucked. I know. And the guys, I don't know, he's like the 20 something young, or whatever. All the guys are in their 20s and he's she's just in her 60s. Being taken care of. So, I mean, yeah. good for her. But I, I, yeah, I'm for my but personal why good preference. Good for her and not good for him. Uh, I think same with both of them. It's just like a little weird. I just don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable being in that position. There's something, I, th- I think the reason people don't feel that way equally is because the like, there's like a power dynamic between men and women that yeah. they would say balances it out in some sense, or it's like sure. Cher is obviously filthy rich and successful, but this guy is a man, so he can, you know, he's. I don't know. I, I don't agree with that. I'm just saying that. I yeah. think that's where subconsciously they're like, oh, you know, good for her. Like it's like the guy has more. You know, whatever. It's all fucked up. I did. Uh, but Bill Belichick looks. He looks insane. Because here's the thing. Cher, <laughs> Cher is still, like, for her age, looks fantastic and, like, dresses great. Bill Belichick has never dressed great. Bill, yes. He One of the bad. worst dressers in the history of the NFL. I feel very confident saying that. The man wore cut off 
hooded sweatshirts. <laughs> a thing that doesn't exist. Does not exist. You know, I had never seen you don't that think before. the ladies look at that and they go, I want some of them. <laughs> get him <laughs> get on me, top of me. me. me I want him inside. He's got, he's just, you know, he's just built, he's built like me. I mean, he's got that <laughs> belly. It's just not a little tank. Yeah, a yeah, tank. yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah. A 22 year old's got 22 year old friends. Like, yeah, that's got to be. Probably his siblings is fucking weird, man. Yeah, you like meet the parents and you're like what, 30. Does he? Years like, 30. what does he do? Or, yeah, or do he you probably just met the parents? Hey, nice to meet you. I'm <laughs> Bill Belichick. Six, six Super Bowl winning. And you're like, it's it. nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm, nice to I'm meet her you. father. Yeah. I'm 20 years younger than you and I like the Colts. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, you want some dinner? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to do in this situation. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! How do you like grill Bill Belichick if he's dating your twenty? Well, Bill Belichick's daughter. doing it right. Bare minimum, he has to go. The way you meet the parents is you take them out to the most expensive dinner, and you go. You do exactly what you did to their daughter. Exactly. Minus because them. because you got it. You go. You show up. You go. Nice to meet you. I'm Bill Belichick. Obviously, dinner's on me. Whatever you guys want. By the way, here's a Tom Brady signed. And Ten we're, things. We're having and, we're having dinner in Milan. Yeah. I rented a yeah. speed plane. You basically just go oh, look. Um, your daughter, thanks for being cool. Your daughter's hot. <laughs> thanks for being cool. Oh, this will be over soon. <laughs> this will be over soon. It'll all be over Either soon. I'm going to oblivion, or <laughs> I don't know where I am in the little quarter yeah. spinning. But the Falcons it's, wouldn't give me a job. Yeah. If you really want to be mad at somebody, be mad at the Falcons <laughs> because. I would have been busy otherwise. I mean, it's wild to me that, yeah, I don't know. It's a wild image seeing them together. But yeah. uh, as, if, as long as she's happy, which uh, maybe she's, it's like you said, if, if she's making, there, living it up and are, having a good time. There are ladies that want that. There are ladies that just want to like fuck an old dude once every two weeks and have a really big house. Those ladies deserve to have those things if a dude... When's it, when's it the dude's turn, man? When are we getting it? Getting what? A big house? Yeah, a big house for fucking I don't know. ladies. I'm trying to make money now. <laughs> Not fuck younger ladies. Oh, like, no, get a big house. I, I want to get a no, big house. No, I was house. saying one of the old, older ladies, like I thought the roles were going to reverse. It was going to be... Oh, yeah. I had an older lady that wanted to fuck I keep me telling once. Meredith I am ready to be the house husband. A hundred percent. Are you? A hundred percent. Yeah, we. I, I was the house husband for a little bit, and Liz hated it. Oh, Liz, <laughs> didn't, yeah, maybe Meredith it. wouldn't like it, but it sounds like yeah. she'd like it. She, we've talked about it, and she sounds cool. I down. think you got to be careful. I think they think they like it because yeah. they've read a lot of books. But when they come home, and you've been, you're like lying yeah, on the like couch and you're underwear. Mad and you're like, well, that's so you got to turn off the mad and before they get home. You cannot be playing video. <laughs> that's it's a it's the the rules of you got to be if you're going to be the house husband. If I'm being a house husband, yeah. I'm being Trad house husband. You're going it, full trad I'm going full husband. trad. Yeah. <laughs> Video games are off. Dinner's right, on the table. Big Trumper. Bit, right, yeah. Hundred percent. Right, yeah. Into Trump. Whatever my well, whatever my wife said. I don't discuss politics. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's you, what you that's, vote how your wife. That's women. That's women business. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. That's just go full. That's me. It last election, I, I was. I didn't want to. How happy would I? Be? I would be happier if I said it's women business. We don't discuss politics. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that was how for the rest of my life I just no, lived. I, I'd be like, that's I'm fine with that. I didn't want to vote last time, so I like pretended to lose my ballot, but I threw it in the trash oh right there. God, and right then good. Liz found it and she was like, What is this? It had like applesauce on it. I was like, I don't know, how'd that get in there? <laughs> She's like, You have to vote. And I was like, You know who I like, just vote and pick me three Republicans that weren't Trumpy that have no chance of winning. And she voted for me. You voted, did, you voted Caruso? I, pr I almost certainly voted Caruso. Yeah. Whoever was going to be harder on I went to the Pacific Palisades Village, which he created. Uh, if you haven't been, it's, it's yeah. really nice. I had a buddy. He does create a utopian mall society, yeah. which is, is, is appeasing. I couldn't afford it, but the it lights a, the lights run on homeless people that are put through a grinder. Yeah, of course. And yeah, <laughs> just their, their blood and bones yeah. just helps power the Jamba Juice. No, oh, it, well, here's what happened. <laughs> Every the reason Caruso came so close to actually winning was because people are so sick of homeless that we were willing to just. Go, there was a brief moment where everybody was willing to be like, 
But what if we just let this guy do what he does? Just, just do the fucking. We'll look that way, and Caruso does. Whatever. I wasn't even looking that way. I was yeah. like, no, do it. <laughs> this is insane. I had a guy. I had a, found a knife by my car. I had a guy throw a bottle at me. Yeah. And then the third day in a row, when I was this is coming back to my job that was on Hollywood Boulevard, uh, there were two homeless dudes boxing in the median, just like full, not, not not like fighting, like dat like. Sparring, oh my god! It was insane. I mean, good for them. I guess you need. It was fucking crazy, practice. dude. It was just yeah. like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, I, I'm all for like being like. I don't want to like be mean to people for no reason, but it's also like whatever we're doing here by trying to be super nice isn't fucking working. It's making more people want to come here that want to live that lifestyle, which is crazy. For us to go, nobody wants to live that lifestyle, but some people do go like, I want to do drugs. Where's the easiest place to do it where the cops aren't going to fuck with me? If you make yourself too permissive, it's like, yeah, it's what it looks like. And it's like, you can't even walk down Hollywood now without being like, I'm going to be murdered. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, don't you, know. I don't know what the solution is. I just no, know no, no, it's no. not going here's as left thing. as possible. It, yeah, it, here's what's happened. We've talked about this before. You're, you've lived in lefty town for so long. I'm losing that my you mind. are getting a little like um, I want to go. But once you go to the other side, and it's what's the other side? Well, the other side is like what for, are they doing for, to homeless people on the other side? Uh, they do labor camps, which is fucked up shit. You basically you just Wait, ring, labor camps. You ring them up on bullshit charges. You. You do prison labor, like in Louisiana. I think they still do it. Wait, what are you saying? They have labor camps in Louisiana for homeless people. I keep people. saying labor camps. That is not what the term is. It's <laughs> prison labor. I don't know what you call it. Well, they it. put people... They You go to jail if you're... So they catch you with drugs. They catch you You go drugs. to jail. You go to jail. You get a certain number of times catching with drugs. Yeah, it's like mandatory minimum yeah. third I'm time. I'm not saying this happens. I don't I don't know that. I'm yeah. totally being... Well, they used to have mandatory minimum sentencing yeah. for drug users. I remember that. I'm but not, that, uh, but uh, to the extreme, it's the thing where it's treating... Dr- but, when you're treating mentally ill and drug addicts like criminals, yeah. that isn't right either. Like that's but, not, you know, it's uh, not, but they also, if you talk to the, a lot of the family members of people whose kids yeah. have been on the street, supposedly prison labor is on the ballot in California. Like you can't do prison labor. Like currently we don't have prison labor. Yeah. We have volunteer. You can be like a volunteer firefighter. I'd be, which for, was the most fucked up. Cause they wouldn't let them become fire. Did you know about that? They wouldn't let them become firefighters after so they would work as prisoners. They would oh, they become forest fire. fires. Yeah, yeah. But then when they were done, because they had a felony, they weren't allowed to be actual fire. They had a TV show about it. It was called Fire Country. Oh. And one of the main guys was like a prisoner who they let do. Because now they do. They yeah. they changed it. So they finally was like, yeah, it is kind of fucked up to be like def- save our forests, but then well, you should risk be able your to, life. You're saying after you get out of prison... For a while, they weren't allowed to be Oh, they should be allowed to yeah, be firefighters. Yeah, totally fucked up. A hundred percent. Every a- solution I hear about it makes me sad because it's like, okay, so yeah. we get a Caruso in. It's like you said, they go to the meat grinder and we go, well, there's a lot less homeless. I wonder Ooh. where they went. Well, this is, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a, it wasn't All right, off stretching to out like this before. Yeah. This is weird. <laughs> I almost got... I or, guess, you, or you... Or you you elect some progressive insane person who's like put them all in the hotels <laughs> it's yeah, like they're like okay so now the hotels are just like, like these like you walked over you stepped yeah. over a homeless guy that homeless man is now married to your wife you're now in a yeah well, <laughs> or 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 you end up with the karen bass which is like she's done pretty much uh i mean she she lowered homeless by 10 percent, which she's like praising but it seems like it was all done by nithya Raman. Who's super liberal, progressive? Yeah, Caruso. He'll be fine. Run again, buddy. Caru- it's got to be somebody who does the old, you know, the Bloomberg. You got to do the. No, fake. it needs to be like fucking Chuck Norris. It needs to be a actor <laughs> that this 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 town can't stop jerking off famous people. It needs to be a famous Republican. But I'm saying you got to pull be- the Bloomberg, which is the progressive seeming. Progressive, it, yeah. It, I tell you who it is. It's Dennis Quaid. No, he's too crazy now. Dennis Quaid's crazy. Yeah, Why people he, know he's why, not he, like crazy. He crazy. Played Reagan. No, he has sound clips. He's not crazy. Oh, what's, just, what are his clips? He's just pro Trump and all that stuff. Like it's yeah, just yeah. not. It's got to be someone that people aren't thinking about politically. No, it could be Katy Perry because she supported uh, uh, Caruso. She wanted. Oh, Caruso. Katy Perry would be a good one. And then you come out and it's very progressive sounding and all this, and then you just. 
He's just going to make us feel like we're voting for the right person. Yeah. And then we never pay. No, if I asked anybody who voted for Karen Bass what she's done, no one knows. Yes, that's true. I only know I pay. I feel like I'm a little, I read a little more of the news than other people. Yeah. And so I only know a little bit. And uh, she has definitely, your average voter has no fucking clue what she's done with her time in office. So they just need some, I mean, she kind of is that person. Like she's definitely not uh, a lefty. She is definitely moderate. Uh, Were you talking about Karen Bass or Karen Katy Bass. Perry? Karen Bass. Yeah. No, I'm saying for Katy Perry, she would have to run similar to Karen Bass, but then she could just have Caruso design all yeah. her actual policies. You could probably get like, uh, I think McConaughey would be a good one. McConaughey, come on, yeah, McConaughey would be a great one. McConaughey, I think he'll win Texas. McConaughey think, would be good. I think his ultimate play is Texas, though. Yeah. Because then you go president. I think The Rock, the Rock could go Cali. He's no, a California he's resident. Not, you have to be able to really fake being, I mean, Katy Perry would even have a hard time. I think it, you have to really, I don't know. They voted for Schwarzenegger, so it's always it's always a possibility. I think, I, I think The Rock can get voted in. Anyway. I, I, think, I would have I, a any, hard time not voting for The Rock because he has been built in my brain as, like, he is so deeply in my subconscious as almost like a religious figure. Yeah. Because just, I mean, how how this man has occupy, occupied, like, my brain since the fucking mid-90s. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. I would, yeah. Only if he goes, especially if he goes by the Rock. If he, if it, if it's, you know, if he goes by Dwayne Dr- Johnson, no, no, no. If no, it's no. the Rock, or yeah. could he go Dwayne the Rock Johnson? No, it's no, it's the, the rock. rock. Rock, yeah. And then and all wanted- his policies, all his slogans, are vague Rock references, right? Yes. Can you smell what the Rock is getting rid of? It's the <laughs> stinky homeless. <laughs> <laughs> if you smell what a uh, renewed commitment to NATO is cooking. Yeah, that kind of stuff. By the way, turning those lights off, huge mistake. Oh, we're sitting in pitch black. This is like pillow talk <laughs> at this point. <laughs> it is just pure black. It's it it yeah. just an insane, a crazy, stupid choice. Yeah. Because now you what need it is, like a remote light that you can like turn on when this That happens. would be great. Yeah. Beep boop. Yeah. Uh, we're at time. We should right. we should wrap it up. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this was fun. Yeah. Should people, you're crushing it on your podcast. Thank you, man. Yeah, I listen to the. Love. You too. I gave you advice that I shouldn't have, <laughs> but we <laughs> always do that. You In act theory. like we don't do that. No, no, I do it we too. We do it all I'm the time. To stop because Liz is. But told I feel me- like we, you and I, can do that with each other. We gotta keep that alive. Okay, then I do have some advice for you. I want to hear it. I don't know. I don't think you want to hear it. Go. It's about your clips. Yeah, your- please. Okay. You can, in your clips, yes. there's a button to say edit profile view. Yes. And you can drag it up so that it's not like, so that it's on people's faces. I'll show you on Instagram. Yeah, show me. Yeah. It's All one right. button. It, it doesn't change anything in I want to see it. That I'll sounds good. You. I'll show you. Good advice. How can people find this podcast these clips, where would they go? Uh, just search for The Rob Stern Show. Uh, you will find me on Instagram, TikTok, Clapper. Are you Clapper's selling? happening, man. Clapper, I'm up to 5,000 on Clapper. Yeah, I love Clapper. Clapper's fun. I think it's uh, I think it's got the juice. Well, Clapper's also insane because it'll be like, I can, I'll can. i find my video, and then I'll find a video of like a, just the next thing in the stream that's for me is like a starfish with a poem over it. And then it's like three dudes in the Congo getting trapped under a tree. Yeah, it's collapsed. really it's really a mixture. And also like a huge like Appalachian <laughs> demographic. You and I are crushing it in well, Appalachia. Well, there's a huge there's also a huge demand on Clapper to see people fall off their motorcycles and die. <laughs> <laughs> like no like Every fifth video is someone like getting run under a truck, and it's fully it's sh- it reminds me of like old. So those are our fans, old original. If you like <laughs> death by motorcycle, <laughs> uh, Congo rebel violence, uh, yeah. starfish poems, and Appalachian home cooking. If you want to see a boy soldier torturing his best friend. And then my comedy videos, you're Get getting on, on Clapper. You're getting on Clapper. At Eric Helwig And you will Clapper. be a fan of Eric Helwig and Rob Stern. 
Yeah, you. They probably. I bet if you go to Clapper and type in Bud Dwyer, you're gonna find a bunch of fun fan art and like you know instant replays. Slow. Don't look up Bud Dwyer. That's a. Uh, Don't look up. Bud that'll Dwyer. ruin your day. It'll be a bad. It time. will. Well, we explained what it was. People yeah. know what they're getting into. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Don't look it up. Yeah. It's just boys being boys. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's so dark. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> it's a huge mistake. All right. Later. Bye.